This video covers logit and probit models. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify situations where a linear probability model might not be appropriate, interpret the results of a logit or probit model, make predictions in a logit or probit model, and calculate and explain the meaning of a marginal effect in a logit or probit model. In the video on uh, binary dependent variables, uh, we introduced the logit model, which is shown by uh, this equation at the top. Uh, so y is a binary outcome variable, and the logit model uh, predicts the probability that that uh, binary variable is equal to 1 as opposed to 0, uh, and that probability is a function, capital F, of uh, a linear function of one or more independent variables denoted by the x's. Uh, note that we can have uh, more than one independent variable if uh, we desire. Uh, the capital F uh, is uh, the function shown uh, in the middle of the screen. Um, and recall that that always produces values between 0 and 1. Uh, this was uh, necessary because we are predicting a probability. Uh, and this addresses uh, some of the concerns of linear probability models, which sometimes predicted probabilities less than 0 or greater than 1. At the previous video uh, uh, covered uh, making predictions in logit models, uh, but it did not discuss how to interpret the coefficients. Uh, so to uh, talk about interpreting the coefficients, uh, recall an example from the last video where the outcome, uh, y, was completion of a high school diploma. And the uh, one independent variable in the model, uh, x, was uh, the test score, uh, standardized test score, uh, known as the ASVAB. Uh, and that was the only variable we had, so let's ignore uh, the other possible variables. Uh, we estimated that the coefficient uh, beta 1 hat was 0 0.193 uh, from uh, a data set. Um, we may be tempted to interpret this coefficient in the same way that we did for a linear probability model, uh, namely as a marginal effect of an additional test point on the probability of having a high school diploma. However, that's not quite right. Uh, notice that as the test score x increases by 1, uh, it's not that the probability of having a high school diploma increases by that 0 0.193. Instead, it's just this inside of the, the function capital F. Recall we've also called that z. Uh, so it's this z value that increases by 0 0.193 for every one uh, point uh, increase on that test score. Uh, so unfortunately, that's not as helpful. So rather than trying to interpret beta 1 hat on its own, uh, let's try to answer the same question that we addressed. Uh, using a linear probability model, namely, what is the marginal effect of an additional test point on the probability of getting a high school diploma? So one thing to recall is that a marginal effect can also be written as a derivative. And so we are interested in the derivative of the probability of this outcome, namely that uh, the individual has a high school diploma and that derivative is taken with respect to uh, the ASVAB score, so x1 in this case. Okay, so how do we calculate that derivative? Uh, well, we're just going to differentiate uh, this function, this capital F uh, that we have up here. Um, and uh, for now, I'm simply going to call the derivative of the function uh, capital F uh, lowercase f. So we have the lowercase f function of beta 0 plus beta 1 x1i. One okay. uh, however, n uh, recall from calculus, uh, your calculus class, that because we have taken uh, the derivative of a function within a function, uh, we have to apply the chain rule. So we've taken the derivative of this outside function, capital F, and we've gotten a lowercase f but we also have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside with respect to uh, the x1 variable. Uh, unfortunately, that derivative is very easy to, to take. Uh, it is just going to be uh, beta 1, because that is the coefficient on uh, x1. It's a linear function, so it's a simple derivative. 
Okay, so what is this function lowercase f? Uh, well, that lowercase f of z, we said is the derivative of capital F of z with respect to z. And if you uh, recall some rules from calculus, you should be able to derive this without too much problem, but uh, I'll jump to the answer here. So you should get the following uh, function for that lower case. Uh, this now gives us all the information we need to know to uh, calculate the marginal effect of uh, an independent variable on the probability of uh, this binary dependent variable uh, being equal to one. Uh, so in this example, uh, we would need uh, uh, the estimated uh, beta 1 uh, from uh, the uh, statistical software output. Uh, but notice that we're also going to have to uh, get a value of z and plug it into this lowercase uh, f of z formula. Uh, so how do we get a value of z? Well, z is right here. Uh, so z uh, depends on uh, the estimated coefficients, beta 0 and, and beta 1. Um, which we can again get from our, our software. Um, however, we also have to plug in a value of x, the independent variable. Um, and so I, I think it's important to note that the marginal effect that we're going to, to calculate depends on the value of the independent variable, depends on uh, x1, in this case, the ASVAB score. Um, you may recall that when we talked uh, about uh, nonlinear models, uh, we had uh, a similar um, uh, similar issue where the marginal effect of one independent variable on the outcome uh, uh, depended on the values of one or more of the independent variables. We didn't get a, a constant marginal effect like we would in a linear model. Uh, in retrospect, however, this might not be surprising. So let's uh, go back to this graph of the uh, predicted probability of getting a high school diploma uh, versus the ASVAB composite score. Uh, there are two uh, lines here, or two curves. Uh, the red shows the linear probability model predictions, uh, and the green shows the logit model predictions. Uh, we'll remember that a marginal effect on a graph is also the slope. So if I look at an individual, say, with an ASVAB score around 30, um, then the slope, uh, in other words, the marginal effect of an additional ASVAB point on the probability of that individual getting a high school diploma actually looks like it's quite large, or if I perhaps look at an individual who has an ASVAB score around 40, then the marginal effect of one additional point for that individual is quite a bit smaller. Um, this might make sense intuitively. Uh, perhaps we would expect that um, a, uh, uh, an individual who seems to be struggling academically may benefit a lot uh, in terms of their chances of graduating from high school uh, with a small boost in their uh, ASVAB score, whereas someone with a higher score uh, might not benefit as much because they are uh, much more likely to attend college. Um, and this is uh, going to be true in general, uh, where uh, the farther you get out in this S-shaped curve of the logit model, um, the closer to an asymptote, the smaller those marginal effects are going to be. One other way of seeing this is to uh, graph the two logit functions. Uh, so uh, you probably already uh, saw this capital F of Z, this S-shaped curve, which has asymptotes at 0 and 1, uh, consistent with the idea uh, that we are predicting a probability. Uh, the dashed line shows the lowercase f of z, uh, the, uh, the derivative function. Um, and uh, this looks somewhat like a bell-shaped curve. Um, it's technically not a bell curve, and we'll return to that idea in, in just a moment. Um, but uh, perhaps it's not surprising that the largest values of the derivative are also uh, at the steepest point in that S-shaped curve. Uh, one additional uh, note, this, uh, this S-shaped curve, the capital F of Z, could be thought of as a cumulative probability distribution because it's, it uh, starts at 0 and asymptotes at 1. Uh, whereas the dashed line could represent a probability distribution function uh, because the area under the curve is 1. Um, so one thing you might wonder as you look at these graphs is uh, whether there's actually anything special about uh, this particular shape, uh, this particular uh, uh, function. Uh, well, uh, it turns out that there is uh, an alternative to logit which is uh, very similar. Um, 
uh, and that alternative is called probit. Uh, it's going to turn out to have uh, different functions, capital F of Z and lowercase f of Z, uh, but um, they, they will have somewhat similar shapes overall. Uh, so we just noted that, that lowercase f of z uh, in the logit function um, in the lower left uh, part of this table uh, looked a little bit like a bell-shaped curve. Um, more technically, a bell-shaped curve is the normal uh, probability distribution. And the normal probability distribution uh, has uh, this formula that I've just added to the uh, lower right corner of the table. Um, so even if that's uh, not familiar, I'm sure you're familiar with the idea of a normal probability distribution. And it turns out that a probit model is going to do the exact same thing as a logit model, except that it's going to use uh, a different uh, set of functions, capital and lowercase uh, f of z. Okay, so we've uh, written down the lowercase f of z. How do we get to the uppercase f? Well, remember that going from logit to uh, logit's uh, capital F of z to lowercase f of z, we had to take a derivative. So how do you think we get from the lowercase f of z and probe it to the uppercase f of z? Uh, well, the opposite of taking a derivative is taking an integral. Uh, and so sure enough, that capital F of z is given by uh, the integral of the uh, normal distribution uh, function, um, also called the cumulative normal distribution function. Uh, you might notice that I've left the integral in there, uh, and that is because there is no closed form solution uh, to that integral. There's no other way that we can write that. Uh, however, uh, a computer can easily calculate that uh, capital F of Z. So everything that we've discussed with the logit model, uh, whether you are trying to um, calculate a, a predicted probability by calculating Z and then plugging uh, the value of Z into capital F of Z, or you're trying to calculate a marginal effect uh, by multiplying the relevant coefficient times the lowercase uh, f of z. Uh, we can do the exact same thing with the probit model. We just have to use these formulas on the right as opposed to the formulas on the left. All right. Finally, it may be instructive to compare the load and probit functions uh, side by side. Um, you'll see that they generally have similar shapes. Uh, the uh, blue curves uh, are the ones we already saw representing the logit function. Uh, the orange curves are the equivalent for the probit. Um, they are quite similar overall. One minor difference you might notice is that the logit functions have uh, fatter tails, so to speak, uh, meaning that the logit function assumes a relatively larger probability of uh, an uncommon outcome. Uh, that said, there is generally not a strong reason to choose one over the other, and so uh, if you are able to do um, something with one of those functions, uh, you can probably accomplish something very similar with uh, the other function.